Hi there guys, this is uh, probably a bit of an impromptu video, it'll probably be another bits one really because I don't think I'll be concentrating hugely on one specific project, it's the first time I've been out here for ages. Uh, we've got a freaky two or three days of better temperatures, in fact today I think it's already hit 50. Well, there's still plenty of snow left one week later but we're probably going to get a little bit of a thaw now. It's going to be here for a while. Of course, quite a lot of this, in terms of the big piles, was uh, my buddy next door, Paul, who did a wonderful job with his bobcat. A uh, bit of a struggle to get it up to 50 in here, but uh, it's better than it was. So I'm just picking at stuff really, the, the shop is in absolute state. Uh, I didn't uh, leave it very tidy at the end of the sort of, well, I was going to say fall, probably back in December when I was still getting out here. But uh, I've got the main door open, the sun is shining nicely. And as I say, I'm just picking at stuff, I've got four tea nuts that I got, I forget when I got them, but anyway they're a little bit oversized, I've got to mill those down so I can use them. And I've got a couple of new items I'll just show you. I'm planning the piece of half inch plate for the quill stop, I'm going to try and make a start on that soon. And also in the last video I described uh, a gadget that uh, Chuck outside screwball had for dealing with short pieces in the bandsaw. I've got some material out which I'm probably going to try and use soon. Uh, and that's probably about it. I'll do a wrap up at the end if it's relevant but anyway it's just bits and pieces literally. <laughs> it's just nice to be back in the shop just doing odds and ends. Alright here we go. I forgot to say I'm using the uh, camera mic. I haven't bothered to set up the radio mic. I'll probably use that a bit more later on when we're into some more consistent project stuff. Anyway, acquisitions. I got these. Um, they were... seemed quite a good deal. I, actually, I had an email. What was it? Ironbridge Tools. Never heard of them. And I guess they just sent it to one of my private emails. Um, and I don't usually respond to those sort of ads, but anyway, these set of four plus a nice little box of mini tools, um, screwdriver stuff, you know, bits of various sorts, handle, ratchet, and all together about 20 bucks. Thought it was worth doing. But these... There's an arrow, some of you may have seen these, I don't know, but there's an arrow. Depending which way you want to turn your, your nut or bolt head. But uh, the useful thing about them is they're, they're, they're versatile to the point of fitting more than one size. And as you engage on the, on the nut, there is a rotating ring and you get a camming effect. One benefit being it's a, a way of gripping a, a nut or bolt that's got very rounded off. I've yet to put them to the, the real test, but I, <laughs> I thought 20 bucks wasn't bad. So that was those. And the other thing, which had been on the list for quite a while, was, uh, was this thread mic. I was reminded about it when Dale... Metal Tips and Tricks was uh, using his. Uh, as usual with me, it's uh, an import. Shah's unit. But uh, so far, I've, I've really been quite impressed. I've got this calibrated for, well, it's the middle size set. And I forget actually what uh, what it covers. So you've got the little V-split anvil and the uh, cone point. 
This is for, well, I don't know, I'm guessing probably quarter twenty type stuff. So quite pleased with that. And altogether five five pairs of anvils. And to be honest, the price wasn't at all bad compared to a Mitotoyo or similar. And then the other thing here, the plan for... This is very early days here, but the plan for the bandsaw device. I won't need to be as long as this. Probably cut that off. The main thing is to have this piece, this piece of half inch, uh, probably th uh, two or three rows of holes. And we'll make those um, 3 8 16. And then down one side, we need a fence. And I've got a scrap piece of angle here. I don't know, may use that. I've got some bar. I may bolt that to the side with some countersunks. Thicker piece. So the idea is, for those who hadn't seen Chuck's uh, device, once you've got the holes in here and you've got this in the bandsaw vise, and you put your workpiece down the end here with a regular clamp and that way even if it's only an inch long you can cut off say a quarter inch otherwise it's impossible and the other thing is uh, early stages on the quill stop that's uh, a drawing of the I'm going to get it in frame there that's the current design from the CAD. And one or two things are slightly open to final tweaks for accuracy. So what we're going to do so far, uh, mark up a centre line. This line, if you can see it, that this is spare material. But I can't get this in the bandsaw very easily to cut that off. So I'm probably going to try and bandsaw the main shape out. So get a centre line, get a centre point, um, make a an inner circle, scribe the outer circle, and then the edges. Basically something just to be able to work towards, get the thing cut out. So I've got to get that marked up, maybe today. So much on the back burner, it's ridiculous. All I'm doing here is taking 25 thou off the bottom and uh, let's bring that up. That should give me adequate for the uh, for the sides. I'm just going to check that. Anyway, the idea is just to, you know quick down and dirty just to get the clearance, so uh, 25 thou or a bit more off the bottom and then I don't know, forget what it is now, but 15 thou off each edge otherwise they're good to go, so I'm going to try and get those done well, I've got the machine off underneath and uh, taking about 38 thou off each side. Let's see how that works out. Looking for about 790.790. Uh, 
75, that's about right. I just take the burrs off this one and uh, check it for fit. The only other thing I'll have to do to these is uh, having machined off the bottom, we'll put some uh, punch upsets around the periphery there so that the, we get a thread stop. So hopefully. It's not done up very tight. That feels good, a little bit of movement, which is nice. Some of my other ones are a bit tight, and if the swarf in the T, uh, they don't move so easily. So that's that one finished. Let's get the other three to go. Last edge coming up. Um, I meant to say I'm using a, <coughs> a half inch carbide end mill, it's actually a, f a slightly worn one but these uh, T-nuts are fairly hard so I'm getting an adequate cut from that and as I say it's down and dirty, very functional. That should do it. Just got to deburr that and uh, let's get that cleaned up. I haven't even bothered doing a check measurement on these because uh, I've gone for a, a slightly, slightly generous cut. As I said just now, the, some of my other ones are a little bit tight when there's chips in the tea. That feels good. Alright, that's one little chore out of the way. Let's see what's next. Alright, we've well, got this marked up. Just the basic profile here. I'm trying to work out the um, what sequence I want to do. I'm hoping my little <laughs> very old three-wheel bandsaw will function. I've got a new blade in it that should be good for the aluminum. So what we'll probably do, I think, this is the current plan, as you know with me, things change. But I think I'll try and rough out the the outside, so we'll probably cut the circumference there with two cuts. This side, I'm not sure because I haven't taken the surplus off yet. I may have to do that yet. Anyway, we'll get to the main profile and then set up in the mill, raise this up on some uh, parallels, clamp it, get centered on here, and then we'll use a boring bar, I think. This circle is the only really critical bit. It wants to be just a few thou larger than the than the quill diameter. And get that out with the boring bar. The outside will have to be hand finished, I think. Uh, Randy Richard, I think, suggested possibly that I set up on um, the rotary table. And that may, would mean I could mill that radius, but the setting up is a bit tedious. So I may yet uh, cut it and hand finish. So that's where we are with that for now. Well, today is certainly bits and pieces. <laughs> Preparation for uh, later on, I suppose. Amazing, the temperature in here has actually got up to 52. Quite incredible, and it's not going to last, which is a pity. 
Nice to be back out here. Anyway, the um, what I'm going to call the bandsaw short piece jig, as per Chuck. Um, I've cut this piece to a, an adequate length. It's got saw cuts all round, and of course, it's not really very critical for um, parallelism, etc. But I'm going to clean up each edge and just uh, prepare it, and then I'm going to mark it up. Just take about a tenth hour skim off. This piece could do, <coughs> could do with being a little bit wider actually, but uh, it's very much down to what material I've got and uh, making best use of it because when material is limited in supply, you've got to use it the best you can. So I have to start that at, we start at uh, about 3 thou, and then it's going to increase. In fact, you can see, you might be able to see, I'm not sure, this corner is not good, I'll take another, take another uh, few thou there, it's going to be a heavier cut by the end. Right, that's going far enough down now. Yeah, that was about 25 thou down this end. Anyway, that's got us pretty much parallel. And I'm not sure whether to do the ends. I think I might do just to tidy them up. And this really isn't super critical. But, uh, I might as well try and get square. I'm probably going to get my arm in the way here. I'm just using, a, I've already done it actually, I've just used a parallel just to eye up. I've had to knock it slightly to the right. This end's off and so is the other. So we'll get this end right and uh, flip it over and do the other. As I say, it's not really very critical. But somehow it's nice to do it reasonably well. Should be able to get away with a fairly light cut, I think, on this end.
we'll deburr that and uh, see what we can do to mark it up. Well, <clears throat> I found another piece of half inch by <laughs> I think it's inch. Yes, half inch, inch and a quarter. I think that'll do as a fence and I only had to trim the end slightly. It's not been machined, I've just uh, scotch brighted it. I say this is, this is like so many things functional. So I'm just I'm not going to bother to blue this because I don't think it matters. I just get some approximate lines. Well, that one wasn't very accurate, was it? Just nominal three quarter inch centers here. Yeah, that's three quarter. Well, that's close. So I'm probably going to make this the uh, make that the side for the fence. I centre line slightly this way, but <coughs> and we'll drill and tap this in the lay in the mill. And we'll do a fairly close hole pattern to give plenty of uh, leeway for clamps. And then I think while drilled and counter bore this, I think three bolts will do. And having done that, we'll super glue it to the side here and use those holes for marking out and then drill and tap this that'll give us a fence and that'll just about do it I didn't see any point in uh, facing this off so it's functional pretty generous hole pattern if you can see the marking but uh, that's only a guide I'll I'll do it on the uh, in the mill. Use the DRO and there's three quarter centers and offset, so I get diagonals. Probably way more holes than I need, but you never know. So that's uh, something to get on with soon. Uh, <laughs> I've got so many things to do. I don't know what to go on with next. I think. Uh, Might get that drilled and counterboard. Probably use some quarter twenties or something in there. Try and get some holes drilled in the fence. That's a start. Now I get set up to a quick counterbore. I've uh, touched off on the DRO there, so we'll go 225 close as we can.
that's okay. All right, I think we'll get that set up on the uh, base piece and uh, glue it. All right, I'm going to drill three of these and get uh, go down about three sixteenths or thereabouts, and then we'll get some heat on that and get it off and. Uh, Put a tapping drill down there. See if we can get that off with some heat. Okay, it's Got that off. Now get some tapping holes. get the other two done and then we'll get some tapping. My tap is uh, a fairly new one but being a small one it hasn't got a centre hole at the back so what I'm doing is just making a start by hand here and then we'll finish we'll finish it off I'll get my hand in the way. I'll take this out and put it in the mill, the uh, drill press vise, and just finish them off by hand. So there's the fence, and that's uh, that's come out pretty good. I mean, that's not a machine surface on that piece of bar, but that's not really too important. All right, so. That's how it'll be in use. That should be high enough to uh, act as a fence for most items. Uh, I was going to quit. As soon as I haven't been out here for so long, I'm still carrying on a bit. I got this plate set up. Uh, I got the parallels separated by a spring, so it'll give me clearance either side and uh, I'll say 17 holes just starting the first one And 16 to go. My markings, as I think I said, are very arbitrary, so I'm using the DRO to go on uh, three quarter inch centres.
It's a bit squeaky because I'm uh, too lazy to use anchor lube, which I ought to really, but I want to get things moving. So I'm going to carry on, rinse and repeat. Uh, what job wouldn't be complete without a bozo moment? <laughs> it's usually one somewhere. I drilled the hole here. I thought that sounds a bit funny. Of course I've drilled across one of my uh, mounting holes for the fence. No big deal really. Anyway, I just started threading on here. Get that out of the way. More repetition. Speed that up just a smidgen. I shall probably go around and do some chamfers later. This is only about a 75% thread, which is adequate for my purposes. So I'm going to get these finished off. I just thread the last one. I'm still wondering why the hell I've drilled so many damn holes. <laughs> oh my god. Well, it gives me a choice, you see, that's my excuse. So I think what we'll do now is uh, we'll go round whilst it's in there. We'll go round and uh, do a little bit of chamfer. I could do that, just uh, sort of freestyle, but I might as well do it whilst I'm there. Last few chamfers. This is zero DRO again. could just oh, I do it freestyle can't be bothered to use a DRO for the other side well quite a long session today I don't know how long actually I've probably been out here probably about five hours on and off and I keep trying to do some tidying up but I'm not getting very far with that <laughs> and I got a big mess here loads and loads of chips what a mess trouble with those is you can't vacuum them up very well because they tend to jam the pipe. So anyway there's the uh, there's a little bugger <laughs> that hole there that went a bit awry the bozo hole you might just see the bolt poking through anyway it locks up perfectly adequately so there's a Sufficiently recessed. Done a quick chamfer on this side. <laughs> and yet again I say the same. Why did I drill so many holes? 
I don't know, it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> but you never know, you might even, uh, might even serve as a little f fixture plate at some time or other. So the idea would be to have, you might have, might go on something like that. And have that holding a, a very short, silly little piece, and stick this out of the vise just cl just clear of the saw blade, and maybe get a nice safe little cut, which is basically it. Looking at it that way around, so you can see it a bit better. All right. So we'll probably put it to the test sometime probably another one of those things that's not going to be used all that much but uh, very nice to have. A couple of times I've absolutely sworn at the uh, bandsaw because I couldn't really get enough grip on the uh, piece I wanted to cut. I've got the small hand bandsaw that's okay for some things but of course if you do it on the machine uh, you tend to get a squarer, better cut than doing it by hand. All right, that's it. First first uh, small sesh out in the shop. Uh, the next couple of days look, well, I don't know, so, uh, it's hard to use the word warm. It's more a case of not ball freezing cold. And uh, even now the metal out here is very cold takes a long time to equalize and I've, I've got to check oil everything up again because uh, the way metal sweats. Anyway that's it, enough rambling from this old fart. Uh, I'll get back at some point I expect. I've got to try and cut that uh, quill stop. I think that'll be the next thing. Try and get the piece blanked out and uh, work on that a bit more. Alright anyway, good to see you guys. Oh, by the way, I realised I'd crossed the 6,000 threshold with subscribers. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's amazing. Thank you to everybody. Really appreciate it. I guess you see something in this old Brit. Um, thanks again. Really, really good. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.